Hello and welcome once again to Anesthesia Tools. When you are asked how many spinal anesthetics have you given, perhaps you may not have a count. But today, let us spare a thought on what happens to the local anesthetic drug deposited in the subarachnoid space. Understanding this may help you to decode many clinical effects you come across after your spinal anesthesia, whether you are a veteran or a beginner in anesthesia. I am Dr. Sanish, welcoming you to this Anesthesia Tools video on what happens to the local anesthetic deposited in the subarachnoid space. The pharmacokinetics of spinal anesthesia involves three phenomena distribution of uh, local anesthetics within the cerebrospinal fluid, uptake of local anesthetics into tissues within the subarachnoid space and elimination of local anesthetics from the subarachnoid space. Here you can find the longitudinal section at the sagittal plane. For easy understanding an outline diagram is also given here we are contemplating the fate of the local anesthetic drug instilled in the CSF enclosed in the subarachnoid space. Here is the diagram with the spinal cord and its coverings cut open to demonstrate the layers, vascular supply etc. And you can find the target of our spinal needle for spinal anesthesia. Remember, the spinal needle is introduced well below the level of conus medullaris where the nerve roots descend and exit through intervertebral foramina forming what is called coda equina. Looking at the cross section, you can find the spinal needle traversing through the skin, subcutaneous fat, supraspinous and interspinous ligaments, ligamentum flavum the epidural space and finally piercing dura to enter the subarachnoid space where the CSF bathes the nerve roots. Now the question is what happens to the local anesthetic drug deposited in the subarachnoid space. Diffusion is the primary mechanism of local anesthetic distribution in the CSF from areas of high concentration that is at the site of injection toward other segments of the spinal cord with the low drug concentration. Longitudinal oscillations generated by the pulsations of the arteries in the skull are believed to be responsible for the CSF bulk flow. The uptake of local anesthetics by the tissue in the spinal canal is greatest where the CSF concentration of local anesthetic is greatest. Whether the CSF concentration is greatest at the site of injection or not depends on the baricity of the local anesthetic solution injected and the position the patient during and immediately after the injection of the drug. To make this concept clearer you may check the YouTube video of uh, regional anesthesia curriculum which shows a glass replica of the spinal column where spread of local anesthetic following injection of isobaric and hyperbaric drug are nicely demonstrated. The magnitude of the neurological impairment produced by spinal anesthesia is determined by uptake which in turn is determined by the concentration of the local anesthetic drug in the cerebrospinal fluid. Therefore, the fact that CSF concentrations of local anesthetic decreases linearly in both directions as a function of distance from the site of highest concentration means that the spinal anesthesia is inevitably associated with gradations of neural denervation that is zones of differential blockade above and below the area of maximal denervation. When a hyperbaric local anesthetic injected in L3-4 interspace can generally spread up to T6 level 
the uptake of local anesthetic is restricted to intradural tissues at and codon to the T6 level. The uptake of local anesthetics into the substance of the spinal cord involves two processes. One is diffusion along a concentration gradient from CSF through the pia mater directly into the cord. This is a slow process. Such diffusion could affect only the most superficial portions of the cord. The other mechanism involves the spaces of virtual robin which are extensions of subarachnoid space that accompany blood vessels penetrating the spinal cord from the pia mater. Through the spaces of virtual robin, local anesthetics dissolved in the CSF have direct access to deeper areas of the cord. The more exposed nerve tissue is to CSF, the more rapid will be the uptake. So, dorsal root ganglia and nerve fibers crossing the subarachnoid space based on all sides by the CSF containing local anesthetic in high concentrations immediately after injection take up local anesthetics more rapidly. Now look, let us look into the definite and predictable sequence in which uh, neurological responses become clinically apparent after injection of local anesthetics into the subarachnoid space. The speed of neural blockade depends on the size, the surface area and degree of myelination of nerve fibers exposed to the local anesthetic. Small preganglionic sympathetic fibers, beta fibers are most sensitive to local anesthetic blockade. Among sensory nerves, C fibers which conduct cold temperature sensation are blocked more readily or earlier than A delta fibers which conduct pin prick sensation. A delta fibers which contact touch sensation are the last to be affected among sensory fibers. The larger A alpha motor fibers are more resistant than any of the sensory fibers. We know that uh, different types of nerves, uh, nerve fibers are blocked by different concentrations of uh, local anesthetics and this explains why uh, it is not all nerve fibers and tracts are simultaneously and equally blocked during the onset of spinal anesthesia. Full development of spinal anesthesia takes time. Regression of blockade or the recovery follows in the reverse order. Motor function followed first by touch then pin prick and finally cold sensation. Clinical observations indicate that neural function of the cord is affected by the action of local anesthetics. However, the result is not chemical transaction of the spinal cord. Not only do some neural elements within the cord fail to absorb local anesthetics, the concentrations of local anesthetics vary widely in different neural elements. The effects of spinal anesthesia on cord function are therefore complex. They are so subtle, so subtle that they may be overlooked in the course of routine spinal anesthesia. Because of the easy accessibility of local anesthetics into the nerve roots, it will be logical to assume that you know, concentrations of local anesthetics are higher in nerve roots than in the cord. We know that uh, nerve blockade is the clinical manifestation of an interaction of local anesthetic molecules within the sodium channels in excitable nerve membranes resulting in inhibition of the sodium influx and consequent inhibition of the initiation and propagation of action potentials. Regression of neural blockade results from a decline in CSF drug concentration which in turn is caused by non-neuronal tissue uptake and most importantly vascular absorption. Remember, elimination does not involve metabolism of local anesthetics within the subarachnoid space. Elimination of local anesthetics from the subarachnoid space by diffusion across the dura from CSF into the epidural space along a concentration gradient represents a significant although infrequently recognized route 
by which uh, local anesthetics are lost from the subarachnoid space. Once in the epidural space, local anesthetics are then susceptible to vascular reabsorption. The continuing diffusion of local anesthetics across the dura with subsequent vascular absorption in the epidural space results in a continuing decrease in CSF concentration of local anesthetic. Local anesthetics in CSF are also absorbed directly from the CSF by vessels in the subarachnoid space, especially vessels in the pia mater. Local anesthetics are also absorbed by blood vessels within the substance of the cord. The rate of vascular absorption in all three areas is inversely related to lipid solubility. The more lipid soluble a local anesthetic is, the less rapidly it is absorbed into the bloodstream. Before we wind up, uh, let us check out this picture in Cousins depicting spinal roots to be harvested uh, at autopsy. The segmental levels are indicated by number. The diameter of the roots is largest for those that contribute to the lumbosacral plexus and posterior roots are generally larger than the anterior roots. Please note that the large roots may be the most resistant to local anesthetic contributing to delayed or absent blockade at L5 through S2 and variable results among individuals. So next time you administer spinal anesthetic, do keep in mind what happens to your local anesthetic drug instilled into the CSF. That is it for this uh, episode. Your comments and feedback are most welcome until we meet next time with Anesthesia Tools. It is me Dr. Sanish signing off. Goodbye.